Thank you very much. Good to uh, see you all this morning. I came to get the latest Peyton Manning news. I remain a fervent, remain a fervent Bronco fan. I'm very excited to hear about that. So my favorite campaign story so far this cycle occurred when I was in Colorado recently. I met a family with a three-year-old. The president has now taken this, feat, uh, this story and is using it on the stump. I met this three-year-old. The three-year-old his family said they were watching TV, and as you all know, there's a few ads about the presidential campaign on Colorado TV. So the, uh, the parents pointed at the screen and said to the three-year-old, Hey, Jason, who's that on TV? And three-year-old said, That's Barack Obama. And, said, and they said, That's right, Jason. What does Barack Obama do? And Jason was excited because he knew the answer, and he said, He approves this message. <laughs> Welcome to life in the battleground state. Jason had no idea he was president, no idea who he was, just the guy on TV approving the message. Well, look, you all, you all delivered the the uh, blueprint on how to do a convention four years ago. What you're going to see, especially Thursday night in the big uh, stadium, is built on the amazing work you all did. You all decided to make Colorado a blue state, and you did and you used uh, Thursday, the last night of the convention to be the biggest grassroots organizing model anyone had ever seen. We are going to take what you did and put it on steroids on Thursday night. We are going to continue to make sure we use this convention as a way to reach out across this country in new and exciting ways. We have some pretty exciting announcements about what we're going to do Thursday night coming up. But you all are the gold standard of how to run a convention and how to run a state. And your battleground state <coughs> grassroots efforts are what now the rest of the country is learning from. So thank you for what you do. Let me give you a quick assessment where we are 64 days before you re-elect Barack Obama President of the United States of America. You all get to decide in large part whether or not this is an early party or a deep into the night party on election night. The president currently sits with 246 electoral votes uh, in the Kerry states of John Kerry. Kerry, those are states the Democrats have carried five consecutive elections. Rodney has about 191. We fight over the rest. We need 24 more electoral votes. He needs 79 more electoral votes. Uh, and we are in battleground states. As my friend David Axelrod says, they are called battleground states because they are hard states. But if we can continue to move in the West, if we win Nevada, New Mexico, Colorado, and Iowa, Barack Obama is President of the United States of America. I hope you all saw the video from last night I talked to the President. Apparently the Boulder event was just absolutely amazing. Crowds spilling out last night into the streets and a huge turnout, which is a very big deal. You know, as we look at the states, you know, you look at 2010 when Michael Bennett won the closest uh, Senate race in the country. Very exciting for that win. Reed won in Nevada. Uh, Boxer and Murray both won in Washington, California. That's how the Democrats kept control of the United States Senate. That is a good blueprint for how we'll win this presidency. The West can lead the rest of the country. And we have other ways to get there. We can win Ohio and Iowa. We can win Florida. We can win North Carolina and Virginia. All those pathways that you've seen us talk about are important. But here's the truth. The truth is the best way to do this is run the grassroots campaign you were all running in Colorado. We have real challenges this time. Voter suppression laws across this country. Unlimited super PAC spending because of Citizens United. But the antidote to all those challenges is a grassroots campaign. The antidote to this, you know, when people see millions of dollars of television ads, eventually they're going to walk out of their house and look at their friends and neighbors and say, how do I do this? What are you doing in the presidential race? What are you doing in the congressional races? At that moment, that's where your field operation comes together. That's where neighborhood teams, are there neighborhood team leaders in the house? Yeah. That's what we're talking about. You guys are going to win this campaign for us. You are the secret sauce of the Obama campaign in talking person to person, block to block, voter to voter. This election is going to be this close. As you know, there's been presidential elections won by one vote a precinct. The work you're going to do makes a difference, and I'll tell you the difference it's going to make. Some of you may know the first two years I was the President's Deputy Chief of Staff, and I got to run the war room for health care and I still don't tell. Now, I remember health care five times. Rahm Emanuel and I walked into the Oval Office of the President and told him health care was dead. Five times. Including the last time, the night after we lost Ted Kennedy's Senate seat. 
five times your president put it all together and said, we're going to pass health care. After 100 years, it's time to get it done. And we got it done. That's the yeah. leadership community. And look, I take our opponent at his, at his word. I think Mitt Romney is an honorable guy. I believe him when he says the very first day he would repeal Obamacare. I believe him when he says he would, he would get rid of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. I believe him when he says he wouldn't take us out of Afghanistan. I believe all those things. And so there's a clearer choice than has ever been laid out before between moving this country forward, continuing the progress we made and making more, or going back to the same failed policies of the past. And Colorado, you all get to decide whether or not we do that. We win Colorado, it is almost impossible for Mitt Romney to win the presidency. Woo! So my Woo! question is, are we going to win Colorado? Yeah. yeah. All right, I think we want to do a few questions. Anyone have questions, hopes, dreams, thoughts? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Kathy Licker, um, what's, what is going on in Mexico? Is it pretty sure that we have New Mexico already? Look, public opinion polling in Mexico shows we have a big lead. Now, we're the Obama campaign, so we don't take anything for granted. But, you know, it's an interesting kind of evolution of all the states, especially in the West. George Bush tied basically both times in, in New Mexico. President won big last time. We continue to have a good lead. We have a great operation on the ground. So while we feel good about New Mexico, nothing for granted, pushing hard. But uh, today we feel good. Is Romney still spending money there? Uh, he's not. He's not. Uh, one of the super PACs continues to spend there, but he's not spending money there. Yes, ma'am. Sonia Lewis from Boulder. I wanted to know, I, I'm so happy that you're doing the expanded offices in Colorado. Tell me about how you came to that, and is do you think it's working for you? Are you getting good results from that? But we believe that this entire campaign is about the grassroots, about building up together, building what we believe has to be the best grassroots campaign in modern American political history. The expanded offices is a piece of that, saying to everyone, how can we work together to turn out the vote, to build a bigger grassroots. We think it is the right thing to do. We think it's an incredible investment. You've all read the national article saying, the Obama campaign is spending all this money early. Shouldn't they hold it for TV? Absolutely not. We should build the best grassroots campaign anyone's ever seen to persuade the, the, the voters who are still unpersuaded and to turn out our votes. And if we do that, we will win this election and Democrats will win up and down the ticket. We've got 60 to 70 percent of our votes in Colorado will be cast before Election Day. What's voter protection looking like before Election Day? Uh, two things. First of all, early vote and vote by mail are our big uh, priorities for both us and the state party, and we have a, a robust campaign. Voter protection is an absolute essential uh, component of that. As you know, your Secretary of State is continuing to, to uh, make difficult decisions going forward on what we're doing here. We'll push back against things we don't agree with. But again, it's why a grassroots campaign matters. Voter protection is talking to people, not waiting till election day, not waiting till an early vote starts. Starting having those conversations with people now about their options to vote. As you know, many people will vote way earlier than election day. Colorado is the leader of all the battleground states in that. That means an earlier campaign. That means you know you change what you do. Earlier vote by mail, earlier door knocks, earlier mail. All those things are important, and we're building a huge campaign on the ground to make sure our voters can vote and push back. You see that. You know, we won a big court case in Ohio on Friday that allows people to vote in the, in the final weekend of the election. We won other court cases, but we don't want to have to go to court. What we want to do is go to the ground, work with local election officials who just want to have good elections, and make sure everyone understands the rules, and we'll play by the rules, and we'll win by the rules. Sir. Hey, Jim. Anthony Graves from the NC. It was good to see you in Colorado when you came on the holiday. I have a question specifically about Ohio. I saw a CBS New York Times poll that puts the president up six points over Governor Romney. And there's a lot of speculation that without those 18 electoral votes, Romney doesn't have a path in the presidency. What is the latest on Ohio? How do you think uh, things are going there? So Ohio is an interesting state. In many ways, Ohio is a microcosm of, of our campaign and our argument. You know, the president, I was in the room when he made the decision to rescue the American auto industry. At the time, a very tough political decision the members of both parties were telling him not to do because the, the politics were tough. He understood a simple truth, which is that you can't hollow out the manufacturing core of this country and continue to think you can have a manufacturing base, that it was the right thing to do. Now I think most Americans would say it was absolutely the right thing to do. At the time, 
Mitt Romney from Michigan originally did an op-ed in the New York Times and then went on CNN and said, let Detroit go bankrupt. That is a true difference. You, you add that to Governor Romney's record outsourcing jobs, his position on outsourcing tax credits uh, for businesses. I think our argument in the Midwest couldn't be any more crystal clear. Uh, the poll you're talking about uh, has been reflected in other polls. The president has built a margin in Ohio. Still a battleground state, still a tough state. But I think Governor Romney is going to have difficult defending uh, his record on auto bailout, tax credits, offshore jobs overseas, all of those things that I think make it difficult for him to win in states like Ohio and states like Colorado. Yes, ma'am? Brenda Ennis, Denver, Denver, Colorado. What about Wisconsin? So Wisconsin, with the update on Wisconsin. Yeah, the update on Wisconsin is, you know, obviously Governor Ryan's, uh, or sorry, Congressman Ryan's selection as Vice President uh, led many people to wonder whether Wisconsin uh, is in play. You know, here's the truth about Wisconsin. We need to get past both conventions and see where it is. Um, Democrats have carried Wisconsin five consecutive presidential elections, but except for 08, they were always very close wins. Carried one by less than a point, Gore won by about a point. And so Wisconsin, you've all seen because of the recall elections and other things, Wisconsin is very close politically, so we'll watch it. We have an amazing grassroots operation on the ground there, led by volunteer leaders who have gone through really tough battles in the past two years, who are the toughest political uh, organizers I've seen out there. Um, we're campaigning hard there. The First Lady was just there. Uh, the Vice President's on his way there. And so we'll look at Wisconsin. Again, we can't uh, assume anything. We need to be very careful to make sure that our map stays intact but I feel good about the organization we have on the ground in Wisconsin. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Blanca O'Leary. I'm a DNC member. I'm from uh, the Roaring Fork Valley in Aspen. And we haven't had, uh, Governor Romney's been there twice and Paul Ryan even opened their office. So we'd like to have Dr. Jill Biden come to our Western Slope College Fair um, October the 7th. <laughs> you can hand that to my beautiful girlfriend right next to you. Thank you very much. Well, we'd love to have a presence there. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Um, I work for the Common Party in Boulder, and I often struggle with the OFA strategy of not um, asking people to vote the whole ballot when they go door to door. I just wondered what the thought was on that. That's a good yeah, point. It, it, it is a good point. So there's there's two things. One, there's some federal state election laws about how much you can contribute to state candidates if you do that. You know, here's what we believe. And look, I ran U.S. Senate races all across the country before I went to the White House. And, I spent a long time helping Democrats win up and down the ticket. If we won the grassroots, if we run the grassroots campaign, we think we're going to run. We will turn out voters. We'll all do do things together. We are working hard on get out the vote across the ticket with everyone uh, at it. it was, if we run that kind of grassroots effort, everybody's going to win. We uh, need to be careful about making sure that we are at the doors, having a clear and consistent message for folks. I know legislative candidates are doing their message as well, and we'll coordinate where we can. Other places we can't, but we'll come together and get out the vote. So that's my long answer to say to you, we'll continue to try to work it out. It's hard. Yep. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Jim, if you could give only one message, what is it? Uh, to you guys or do a swing vote? For us to give out there. I would say two things. I would say this election is about a choice. It's about a choice from moving this country forward, investing in things we all believe in, like education, job training, tax credits to make sure our, our jobs stay over uh, here and not overseas. The other side is going to take us back to the same failed policies that got us in this mess, got us into two wars, and got us the biggest uh, budget deficits of our lifetime. That's what I would say. Good. Does Romney have anything close to a grassroots organization? Because it doesn't seem like You know, here's the truth. The truth is they have more than the McCain campaign, but I don't think they believe it is in it as much as we do. Um, on the ground out there, you know, what they say to reporters that I talk to is, look, this is going to be a wave election. At the end, all of the undecideds are going to swing towards them at the end. I don't think that's true. I think this is an election that's going to be very close and be, going to be about all of us working together to